طلب عينك احنا جينا سيدي تقبل مشينا والدعاء طلب عينك احنا جينا سيدي تقبل مشينا والدعاء قلبي عنك ما تخلى في الارض بالجنة الله كربلاء Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to the live pilgrimage, uh, exclusive live coverage of, Ar of the Arba'in pilgrimage, uh, where we are covering the millions who are flocking towards the Holy Shrine of Imam Hussein, peace and blessings be upon him. I am here in Karbala, and inshallah, uh, in a few moments, we'll, uh, we will be joined with my brother, Hussein of Sukhni, who is on the way uh, from Najaf to Karbala, Paul 1114. That's 1114. Uh, you, I advise you to go and check it out uh, and, and go visit them uh, over there and inshallah they'll provide you with the best of services. As you can see right here, uh, mashallah, beautiful images uh, that were presented with and uh, honestly what I can see right now, uh, Karbala is packed. Uh, when I was trying to get to the channel, uh, it took me about a good 20 minutes and from the other channel to this channel, regular days takes two minutes regular days a quick walk two minutes to get to this channel but uh, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen you know karbala uh, as they say uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created shia to remember around hussein alayhi salam uh, and this is what's beautiful about the land of karbala now a lot of people they wonder when they uh, come to karbala uh, i've been mentioning this over the past uh, few days uh, the, a lot of people wonder when they come to Karbala, how will they find the health services, how will they find the food. Uh, a lot of people are reluctant when it comes to eating from this random market. Um, it, that does also help do choose where you eat from uh, because um, the, the mokib is 100% clean but the environment that could surround the mokib sometimes isn't that clean. So we need to always focus on what to eat and what not to eat what um, things that shouldn't be eaten during um, travel and that's important as well um, we we'll also look at the healthcare. care um, always um, I, I know now in every group that comes there's a doctor uh, but if there's not and you get lost uh, do go to the nearest uh, medical clinic I know there are a few foreign uh, medical clinics set up uh, around uh, Karbala around the holy shrines you have one uh, Bab Abbas right here uh, the main entrance of Al Abbas, you have one at the main entrance of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam, uh, and you have one near Safir Hospital where you can go and visit them uh, as well. And you also have uh, Imam Al Hajjah Hospital, their camp is on the way from Najaf to Karbala, Pole 1127, uh, so you can uh, visit them as well. It's pretty close to the channel's uh, pole as well. Uh, 1114 is the channel's pole, 1127 is uh, the Imam Al Hajjah Hospital uh, camp where you can go and um, inshallah they'll treat you well. Uh, now, going to uh, the medical services which are provided, the Red Cross Society um, every year uh, for the past almost six, five, six years, it's safe to say, that they have brought their uh, medical staff and came to Karbala. Almost 162 medical staff have come this year. Um, from different countries, uh, different cities from Iraq, uh, to help in uh, Arba'in and to help uh, alongside, uh, whether it's uh, the Safir Hospital, which is inside uh, the main city, the closest hospital uh, to the shrines, or just the medical camps that are set around the holy shrines. Now, uh, f 25 ambulances uh, have been brought inside the city, so just in case anything happens, God forbid, inshallah, uh, nothing will happen, inshallah. But, you know, just in case uh, anything happens, um, 25 ambulances have been brought in. Therapeutic services will also be provided uh, during this uh, pilgrimage as well, inshallah, by the uh, doctors as well. If we were to look at the medicine uh, departments, we can see the Holy Shrines, uh, you know, stacking up on their medicine, uh, whether it's Advil, or Tylenol, or Paracetamol, or, or uh, the, the, the medicines that are regularly used, uh, whether if you have um, an infection or you're, you're sick, um, do go visit the clinics that are uh, inside the Holy Shrine. 
uh, because there are specific doctors that take care of this stuff. Um, and also the medical camps that look legit, uh, do go to them, inshallah, all of them are, are legit, but um, you never know. But do go to uh, the most ones that are famous here. You'll find them near Mustashfa Safir at Safir Hospital. You'll find them near the gate of Al-Abbas and the gate of Imam Al-Hussein. And some just outside the checkpoints of uh, Bin Haramain. So when you pass Bin Haramain, you go to the checkpoint, the second checkpoint, uh, you'll find uh, medical uh, camps over there as well. Uh, and you know, a lot of people have reached Karbala, and Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, we haven't seen anyone uh, who was injured uh, who feels uh, kind of you know exhausted. Subhanallah, in any walk, in any marathon, it would take you. For, you know, now I'm uh, I'm seeing there's a marathon going on uh, in New York, uh, 26.2 kilometers, uh, and uh, the people who were done, they were exhausted. Just I think two days ago, this marathon happened. Now, if you were to look at or compare Arba'in to to any marathon that goes around around the world. Around the world People are walking from 80 kilometers towards Karbala. They rest a little bit and they walk. People are walking from Basra, from different cities, towards Imam Hussain alayhi salam. And all of them, when they arrive to Karbala, when they arrive to their destination, they feel fulfilled. They feel like Karbala is the place for their heart to reside. That's why. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he tells his companions, he says, your bodies are here, but your hearts are in Karbala. That's what's beautiful about the pilgrims of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Um, now, I believe we are going to Brother Hussain al-Sukhni. Okay, okay, perfect. So let's go to Brother Hussain al-Sukhni uh, and to see what he has uh, prepared for us on the way from the Jaff to Karbala from Paul 1114. Thank you, thank you very much, Brother Ahmed, uh, for that beautiful insight. Yes, there are many events around the world. There are many, uh, nothing like this, of course, but there are many sort of, you could say, marches. There are many uh, protests. There are many stands that people take around the world and we can to put things into perspective compare for argument's sake for example the march of Arba'in to other marches around the world such as uh, you know I think every 50 years they have a large gathering in India or for example the annual marches they have you know the Christmas parades the other parades they have around the world nothing absolutely nothing comes even close to Arba'in not just in numbers, because again, it's not a game of numbers. Because even if you wanted to play the game of numbers, you know, 28, 30 million, it's already the largest gathering. But let's not play the game of numbers. Let's play the game of a miracle. And, you know, things don't add up. That's how great this march is. Because no figure in human history has been sacrificed for as much as Abi Abdullah Hussein, as much as the person that all these people are walking for. These people are all walking for Abi Abdullah al Hussein, peace and blessings be upon him. These people are working for a man who sacrificed himself, his family, over 1,400 years ago. And until today, you know, every year this has been happening. Since Sayyid Zainab, since Jabal Abdullah al Ansari, every year it's been happening. Until today, people are still working, and every year it grows. We now have a nation of mourners, we now have a nation of people to cry for Abi Abdullah al Hussein, answering the dua of Fatima al Zahra when she wanted a nation of mourners for her son Abi Abdullah al Hussein. This is that nation. No event in the world comes close to the Ziyal of Arba'in. Not even Hajj. Hajj only, you know, three million people. And even with those three million people die, the stampedes. There's, there's many problems, but when it comes to Abi Abdullah al Hussein and his ziyarah, the ziyarah of Arba'in, nothing comes close. All the pilgrims of Muhammad Hussein go to the ziyarah and they return home safely. The only threat is that of the terrorists, those who are the grandsons 
They are from the lineage of Yazid and Muawiyah. They are the grandsons of Yazid and Muawiyah. They are killing the sons of Hussein and Abbas. This is what this pilgrimage is. It is the stand of Abu Abdullah al Hussein against tyranny and oppression. And we are there to console that stand, to tell him, Ya Laytana kunna ma'ak. We wish that we were there with you. And it is as if we are with him, we are marching alongside him, not just him but his grandson, Imam Sahib al Zaman. May Allah hasten his reappearance. He is walking alongside us, he's walking alongside the millions of pilgrims. That is what this march represents. These millions, they have given their lives, they have given their wealth, their money, their health, everything for the sake of Abu Abdullah al Hussein because he gave everything for us. Narrations that say, and I use this narration a lot because you know, it puts things in perspective. He who visits Imam Abu Abdullah al Hussein, knowing his status, it is as if he has visited Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on his throne. That is what the ziyara of Arba'in represents. That is what it means. These millions know the status of Abu Abdullah al Hussein, they know the sacrifice that he made. And I'm sure in the studio from where you are, you know, there is no place to walk, there is no place to see the ground. That's how busy it is. I can only imagine because the numbers are pouring in from where I am and a few, hour, a few hours down the line they're reaching you and reaching me the studio and reaching me Abu Abdul Abbas and Abu Abdullah Hussein. So I can only imagine how busy it is there right now. But here on the road to Karbala, from Najaf alone, you know, the numbers you cannot fathom how many people are coming. Morning and night people are walking and it gets busier than this. You have this road, you have the second road, you have the third road all packed with pilgrims calling to Abu Abdullah al Hussein. You know, some things words just cannot describe. And me just thinking about it gives me goosebumps. The feeling of standing alongside not just the pilgrims but the angels, standing alongside Imam Sahib al Zaman, may Allah hasten his reappearance. I pray that we can all recite Dua al Faraj together hasten the reappearance, knowing that he is amongst us, walking towards Abu Abdullah al-Hussein, inshallah, he can hear our call, we recite together, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma kun li waliyak al-Hajjat ibn al-Hasan, salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih, fi hadhi al-Sa'a wa fi kulli Sa'a, waliyan wa hafadhan wa qa'idhan wa nasara, wa dalilan wa ayna, hatta tuskinahu ardaka taw'a wa tumatti'ahu fiha tawila, برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين. أو إمام صاحب الزمان. If you are here, I hope you can hear me. We pray that this walk will show you how devoted we are to your cause, the cause of your grandfather Abu Abdullah Al Hussein. How loyal we are to you, O Imam of our time. O Imam صاحب الزمان. We pray that you can return to us simply so you can show us the whereabouts of the grave of our mother, Fatma Zahra. Peace and blessings be upon her. Once we know the whereabouts of her grave, we can establish Aza there, we can build a dome, we can build minarets over her. We can establish Aza and we can build domes and minarets over our Imams, over Ummat al baqiq over Umm al-Baneen. The one who answers our prayers, Qadiyat al-Hajat. We owe her at least that, we owe her at least to build her a dome and minarets over her, her grave, the one that has been oppressed for many years by the tyrannical Saudi regime. The Salafi regime, those who have been oppressing the Shia, those who some of us seem fit to unite with, know these people are oppressors. We must stand against oppressors no matter who they are. 
even if they call out in the name of Islam, oppression is oppression. You cannot accept oppression. No matter what, no matter from whom. These people have killed the lovers of the Ahlul Bayt for speaking out. They have killed those who stand up against tyranny. They have cut out their tongues, they have tortured them. What sort of Islamic state is this? And they have oppressed the Ahlul Bayt even after their death. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten their appearance so we can stand alongside our Imam and bring justice to this world. But for now, Brother Ahmed, I'd like to bring it back to you in the studio to inshallah you can bring more insight to the viewers um, on what is happening in Karbala inshallah. Habib Hussain, thank you very much. Uh, that was uh, the, the, the words you mentioned there uh, were beautiful. And I, I want to talk about uh, a few points that you made uh, regarding Arba'in. Now, you mentioned that Ahl al Bayt and the Imams were oppressed even after their death. A lot of people wonder how they already died. They, they already died. How are they oppressed? The most oppressed Imam, it's safe to say, after the death, after his death, after his martyrdom, was Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Because even after his martyrdom, no one was allowed to go to his shrine, and every ruler that came to rule tried. I didn't just try, he demolished the shrine of Imam al Hussain and it was rebuilt a few times, demolished it, destroyed it, and one of the Abbasids, what he did is he opened the water so he can flood the grave, so no one would know where's the grave of Abdullah. But yet, when the water tried to reach the grave, it starts circulating around the grave, and that's why they call it Al Ha'ar al Husseini. We always hear that term, al ha al Hussein, and sometimes we don't know what that means. al ha means the circulated, like the circle, the ha -ar. So that, it refers to the, the, the water that circulated the shrine of Imam Hussain, or the grave of Imam Hussain, alayhi salam. That's why we have the grill right now, the tomb of Imam Hussain. That's where the ha -ar, that's where the water was. It was just floating around, and it wouldn't drown the uh, grave of Imam and after they made people, they cut the pe people's legs and limbs and hands and they took high amount of taxes just for the people to reach Karbala and people did not even care. They said, whatever you want to take, take, will come towards Hussain Now, according to uh, statistics this year, uh, we're expecting, Karbala is expecting, 164 news agencies, press, uh, and from different uh, from different countries, from different agencies uh, that are coming to cover 164 agencies uh, that are coming to cover Arba'in. Now, Imam al Hussein channel, uh, English channel, provides 16 hours of live coverage of the walk. 10 hours of the walk and 6 hours of programs. We have one program in the morning with Sheikh Muntad al Karbala'i. We have one program in the afternoon uh, uh, with Hussein Sukhni and myself. Uh, we have one program at night with Hussein Sukhni and Sheikh Muntad. And then we have an hour with myself at 11 p.m. Karbala time, the late night talk. And inshallah, hopefully, uh, we are giving you the, the, the opportunity uh, that you deserve. Uh, at the comfort of your home, although you need to be here in Karbala to see what Karbala really has to offer because honestly, uh, to look at what I'm seeing right now uh, and I hope we can get a camera out there to, to, to check it out, uh, what's going on, uh, a mokib, uh, a reenactment of how uh, the Shimr brought the family of Imam al Hussein to Karbala and they're just they have the women on camels and they have the children and they have Imam Zain al-Abideen on a horse. I mean, the reenactments that happen in Karbala are honestly beautiful. Although they're, they're, they're very simple and you know, they're, they're, they're not that high quality, but honestly, one of the nicest because the person speaking in the background, he's uttering words that shatter the heart. He just mentioning how the family of Imam al-Hussein 
were about to go into the shrine of Abdul Fadl Abbas and how Zainab, when she came, when she saw her brother on Arba'in, she said, where is my protector? She said, where is the person that took the responsibility of protecting me? I want to see him. So they said, there's one man who stayed on Nahr al-Alqami, on the river of Al-Qami, Nahr al-Furad, Euphrates. So Zainab said, let's go and walk to Abbas. So they walked, and keep this in mind when you walk in Bayn al-Haramain. You're walking in the same footsteps of Zainab when she's going from her brother Imam al Hussein to her brother Al Abbas. Going from the severed head to the severed hands. This is the sacrifice of Karbala. So remember always when you're walking in Bayn al Haramain, remember that you're walking in the same footsteps of Zainab. When you're walking from Najaf to Karbala, know that you're walking in the same footsteps of Zainab. When you're walking from different cities around the world, know that you're walking in the footsteps of Zainab. So when she got to the shrine of Abdul Fadl Abbas, her brother, she sat near the grave. Because as narrations and, historic, uh, and historians tell us that Imam Zain al-Abdin buried al-Abbas and Imam al-Hussein on the third of, uh, 13th of Muharram the third day after Ashura. Now, when she reached, she saw, she said, she, she started to speak to him. And honestly, one of the saddest moments is when a sister talks to her brother in the way that Zainab did. The one who was supposed to protect her. The one who was supposed to get her on the saddle of the camel help her, protect her in any way. She sat there and started complaining to him. Oh Abbas, they did this and this to me. Oh Abbas, they did this and this to your nephews and to your nieces. And the lady just began to cry. So we do find that these individuals who are walking in Karbala doing the reenactments are trying to show the people, although it's a very small picture, they're trying to show the people how the caravan of Imam Hussein entered Karbala, because there are narrations of where they entered from, how did they enter, with who. So they just go around and uh, reenact what Arba'in uh, was uh, a couple of years back. Now, uh, this year, inshallah, uh, we have almost 7,352 processions, mashallah, a huge number. 7,352 uh, processions, uh, whether it's around Karbala, on the outskirts of Karbala, or inside Kar Karbala, uh, processions are going on and 24 7. 73 of them are foreign mawakib. Uh, so uh, processions that are from abroad uh, and when I mean by procession I don't mean people marching no no, no. I mean uh, a mokib set up a place set up whether it's a camp whether it's a building that they've uh, rented or taken over um, and they are using it to provide services for the pilgrims of Imam al Hussein so 73 foreign uh, processions places uh, and you have uh, a lot uh, of processions as well, 7,352. 7, uh, but we will go back to Hussein Sukhni to see what the road from Najaf to Karbala looks like. Thank you, Brother Ahmed. Yes. The media plays a huge role in the service towards Abba Abdullah al Hussein. In this day and age, it is one of the most important methods of service. And we here are implementing that method. Alhamdulillah, I'm able to serve along my brothers here at the camp at Paul 1114. So I'm going to walk a bit, I'm going to show you where we work and show you some insight as to, you know, 
effort that's been put here in the camp. Now at Pearl, 1,114, you see the millions walking, uh, don't want to cut any pilgrims off. Uh, you can see that, you know, the pilgrims walk past. Here is the campsite in which, here is the, the campsite in which the work is done from morning till night. You know, there are live streams in four languages from Arabic, English, Persian and Turkish. Broadcasting over 24 hours. You know, we have people here at this camp. They don't sleep from their service. Constantly up, constantly serving the pilgrims, making sure the image of Arba'een is brought to you at home. So here is the camp in the middle of the walk towards Arba'een. Um, you know, just imagine the effort that's been put in. My job is easy. I prepare something to say, I come up and I say it. But I feel sorry, you know, I ask you all to pray for the cameramen, for the directors who stay up all night preparing, who have to stand in the heat um, to bring this image to you. And we thank them for their services. But again, this is all khidmah of Abdullah. It is the same as someone cooking food for the Zawar. It is the same as massaging the Zawar. Because this is spreading the message of Abi Abdullah Hussein. And, it here, and here at Imam Hussein TV, we are doing just that we have this camp, we have cameramen all over the walk trying to get different stories of motivation, different stories of why people walk to Abu Abdullah Hussein. You know, why they, you know, these disabled people, these amputees, why do they put the effort in uh, to call to Imam Hussein? What pushes them? Each person has their unique story, and through the media, you can take that unique story from that one person middling, uh, living in the middle of nowhere and throw it to the rest of the world so the whole world can see why there's so much being sacrificed for this man who lived a thousand four hundred years ago what did this man offer to the world that all these people are going through so much effort sacrificing so much so they can reach him and gain nothing from reaching him you know no worldly desires they reach him just to look at the dome and say, Assalamu alaikum, Abu Abdullah. Peace be upon you, Abu Abdullah al Hussein. That is the goal that we try to achieve. We try to achieve this goal of showing the whole world, you know, the relationship between the lovers of Abu Abdullah al Hussein and Abu Abdullah al Hussein. The relationship between us and our master. The reason we do this for our master, we gain no money, we gain no gold, we gain nothing worldly from visiting Abu Abdullah al Hussein. All we gain are the barakat, the bounties, the, the bounties in the afterlife, the blessings of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. If I am ill, I don't go to the doctor, I go to Abu Abdullah al Hussein. The best doctor. The only doctor in the hospital that is Karbala. If I have any problems, I go to Abba Abdullah Al Hussein. I go to my master. These problems will be solved. And I'm sure, Brother Ahmed, you in the studio, you feel this as well. You see it in the eyes of the pilgrims, as I do here. I know from past experience how busy Karbala is. I know that. Last year, the year before that, even Bayla Haramain, as you can see on your screens, dear viewers, it is unbelievably packed. There is nowhere to walk Bayla Haramain at the moment. Nowhere at all, let alone the streets surrounding Bayla Haramain. Up until here, the roads are closed from cars. That just, you don't understand how busy Karbala gets. It shouldn't even be able to hold 28 million people. But this is part of the miracle. A city that can usually hold only what, three, two, three million, now holds 28 million people. This is the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He expands the earth, He expands it to hold the Zawar of Imam Hussein. This is the greatest of lands. This is the land of sacrifice. This is the land of bloodshed. The holiest blood was shed in this land. This road that I'm walking on now, this road that I'm standing on now, is the same road that that felt the feet of 
Imam al-Sajjad and Sayyidah Zainab, the same road that they stepped on, this blessed road. May Allah have mercy on those who walk on the same road. May Allah have mercy on those who scream for Abi Abdullah al Hussein, whose face changes color for Abi Abdullah al Hussein, whose cheeks wipe themselves on the shrine of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. May Allah have mercy on them. Again, inshallah, in a few days I'll be joining you in Karbala, Brother Ahmed. Uh, I know it's very busy, but there is no other place to be right now than next to Abu Abdullah al Hussein, next to the Master. Regardless of how busy it is, regardless of the dangers, regardless of anything. Because as I said, he sacrificed everything for us and we must give everything back to him. Now back to you, Brother Ahmed, in the studio uh, with uh, some more insights. And inshallah, we'll be at your service very soon. But from me, assalamu alaikum. Habib Hashan, thank you very much. Uh, the beautiful atmosphere around you uh, when you're walking through the pilgrims. I know it's, it's very packed and as you mentioned, um, uh, if you think that the roads to Karbala are packed, you have to look at Karbala right now. Right now I'm looking at the gate of Al-Abbas salam, and it's absolutely packed. Absolutely packed. Ben Haramain is packed. You know, maybe on the roads you, you'll see um, a meter or two meter distance between one pilgrim and the other. In Karbala, you won't find a quarter of a meter between <laughs> the, the distance between each pilgrim. A huge amount of people, huge numbers of people have reached Karbala safely, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Speaking of security, you know, when Hussein mentioned that, you know, Hajj reaches 3 million, 4 million max, when you see Karbala, 28 million, 25 million, and Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, nothing happening. 3 million a few years back caused a stampede, resulting in the death of hundreds. Yet Karbala, smaller than Mecca, holds over 28 million. That's what's astonishing about Karbala. Now, speaking of security and Alhamdulillah, everyone arriving in Karbala safely, um, the ministry, the Defense Ministry of Iraq uh, and the Defense Ministry of Karbala and the Holy Shrines have uh, worked together uh, over the past two years uh, to spread out more uh, military uh, caravans around Karbala uh, and to also uh, they, they bought the latest uh, technology uh, that to, to identify uh, bombs, may God forbid, uh, or uh, guns or anything uh, that uh, are tried or if someone tries to smuggle them uh, into Karbala and uh, the baggage scanners, uh, the x-ray scanners, they are um, I think German, as they said uh, a few days ago uh, to the press. Now, this is uh, the security that uh, is brought to Karbala and Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Uh, everything is for the sake of Abba Abdullah and for the sake of keeping the Zawar, the pilgrims of Imam al Hussein, safe and returning them home safe and sound. Speaking of safe and sound, Imam al Baqir alayhi salam, he says to one of his companions, he says to him, if you go to the ziyarah of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, there will be a crowd of angels on your right, a crowd of angels on your left, your front and back, who walk you towards Karbala. When you reach Karbala, the number of angels double. As soon as you leave your home to, to Karbala, a group of angels will surround you. When you get to Karbala, they double. When you bid your farewells and you're about to go for Allah, uh, to back home, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the angels to seek forgiveness for you. Istaghfirullah, seek forgiveness for him so his sins are removed. The narration says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for every step that a pilgrim takes, he gives him a thousand, thousand the good deeds thousand thousand that, that's a million a million good deeds and he will erase a million bad deeds and he will switch them and he will change them into good deeds this is what we need 
So when that pilgrim leaves the shrine of Imam Hussein, bids his farewells, and goes home, the angels will stop at his door when he arrives, and he will say, they will say to him, Go, for you are protected by Allah and by the angels that surround the grave of Abu Abdullah. The pilgrims that come to Karbala, honestly, honestly, if you were to ask any of them who have come consecutively, year after year, and if you ask them, were there any different blessings that were brought into your life this past year? I assure you 100%, and I've done that. I've asked people who have come to Karbala consecutively for the past three years. Every year I would see them and I would ask them, is there something special that you weren't expecting in that year? And it happened and I'm not even kidding. 99% of them said that this and this happened and we're not even expecting it. Whether it's, it's, it's business, whether it's medical, whether anything, anything, anything. Because Imam Hussain alayhi salam is the person, as Hussain said, the hospital has become Karbala and the cure has become Hussain. This is what we need to keep in our mind when we are on our way to Karbala. When we reach the Holy Shrine of Imam Hussain, the only intention we need to keep in mind is the intention of rising or raising the message of Islam and being like Ahl Bayt alayhim salam trying to always establish peace, try to always seek for peace. If a person is being treated unjustly, we need to go and stand next to that person, hand in hand with him, overlooking what his religion is, what his faith may be, what his creed may be. Because Imam al on a day of Ashura, Christians stood alongside him. Jews stood alongside him. People from different races stood alongside Imam al because they recognized that the message of Imam al-Hussein was not a message restricted to Bani Hashim, restricted to the Arabs, restricted to the Shia, restricted to the Muslims. Absolutely not. The message of Imam al-Hussein was not restricted to any time, any faith, any creed, or any gender. So we need to comprehend that and keep that one idea in mind. Now, going back to uh, the processions that are established around Karbala, uh, I know that uh, in every year uh, there are over 600 uh, processions in Karbala. Uh, that, uh, it's over 600 processions in Karbala uh, that are uh, branched out from medical camps um, so uh, if you do feel sick once again uh, if you feel sick due to the heat the food due to the water uh, due to anything do right away go to them because they will provide you with the best health inshallah uh, with the best medical treatment but we'll, we'll go back to Hussein Sukhni uh, and to see what else he has prepared for us from the way uh, to Najaf, from Najaf to Karbala Brother Hussein. Thank you again, Brother Ahmed. Uh, this is a very important coverage that we are doing and I understand the hard, hard work that you're doing in the studio also, uh, especially with the, you know, the amount of people that are there, the amount of pressure that's on the servers. I know that you're all finding it great difficulty to go in and out of the channel, in and out of the studio to serve the pilgrims. But again, this is all service towards Abu Abdullah Hussein. This walk that I am standing in now, you know, last year, Alhamdulillah, I was blessed with the opportunity to, to walk from the city of Basra. I done coverage from the city of Basra, I started from Al Dana area. As Basra is the most southern city in Iraq. So, we walk from Basra every day, we would film and we would do a coverage 
or the different mawakib, the different people, the, the different, you know, hosts. You know, we were invited to different people's homes each night because they begged us, they would beg us to come in, to wash our clothes, to feed us, to give us a place to sleep. I would not take no for an answer. So, I've, alhamdulillah, been blessed with the opportunity to experience the world from different areas, from different types of people, from different angles. And I've seen the different services, I've seen the way people sacrifice, I've seen the things that people have in their heart that they wish to pour out towards Abi Abdullah al Hussein. I've seen the way people serve Abu Abdullah al Hussein knowing his status. And as I said, those who visit Abu Abdullah al Hussein knowing his status, it is as if they have visited Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his lifetime. Uh, on, uh, I apologize, David. It is as if he's visited Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on his shrine. Yes, these visitors are excited. They are excited to visit Abu Abdullah al Hussein. They are excited because they are not far now from the Mawla and they are nearly there. They know they are nearly there. They know that the Mawla is only a few hours' walk away. You can see it's very busy here. There is no such thing as crowd control. People coming in and out, people are just wanting to reach the Mawla, and that's understandable. And I I wish I still had that had that man inside me and I will be walking inshallah towards Imam Al Hussein inshallah. I will be walking tomorrow night after the show welcome to Karbala. I have been blessed this year with that opportunity and I will be praying for you all. I'll be walking footsteps for you all, especially you brother Ahmed. I know it may be difficult for you to walk this year uh, because you are serving in the studio in Karbala but I'll be walking in your honor inshallah. I know that is difficult for some, but you know, there is tawfiq for others. Uh, on that note, it is getting difficult here. Uh, you know, I'd like to pass it back to you. There is much more to say. There is much more to say, but it is very busy right now. And I want to pass it back to you so you can uh, speak more in a more open environment, inshallah. So from me today, I think uh, that's it, inshallah. I will speak to you tomorrow. But uh, I ask you to pray for me. You're next to the Mawla, next to Abdullah al Hussein before Allah Abbas. So don't forget me in your du'a and forget the whole team here. But for now, uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Habib, Brother Hussein, thank you very much uh, for the insights that you gave uh, from Najaf to Karbala. Uh, now, Hussein and the team of Imam Hussein TV channel uh, are staying at the poll 1114. Do I advise you uh, to go visit them? Uh, to check out uh, what they have as programs uh, and also if you want to record your experiences uh, on the way from Karbala to Najaf you can do that you can go uh, to uh, the uh, to the camp uh, and record over there and sorry if I pause sometimes because I'm getting information uh, feed it through my ear uh, now uh, but when you arrive uh, from Najaf uh, if you're walking to Karbala uh, do stop at poll 1114, uh, 1114, uh, and do share your experiences. Record your experiences. They have a small booth where they'll sit you down and they'll record you of what did you experience this year in Arba'in. Is it different from the last Arba'in if you've been? And if you haven't been, what's your first experience in Arba'in? And you can take that uh, as a, a, a remembrance for you when you go to back home uh, you know you can remember and it will be uploaded on YouTube inshallah on Imam Hussein 3 TV and it will be shared on our Facebook page at Imam Hussein 3 TV as well would like to thank you very much for joining us tonight hopefully we can uh, you can tune in tomorrow for a different inshallah for a different episode and for different vibes in Karbala because we are in Arba'in and where else do you want to be on this occasion than Karbala. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.